good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, so I think we're ready to go and thank you for joining us at today's webinar, The Importance of Decisioning and Executing Your Personalization Strategy. Uh, just before I do some introductions and hand over to our speakers, uh, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded. Uh, we'll be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. Uh, we do welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with your colleagues. Also, uh, we do invite your comments and questions. So please look, in the, look at the Q&A chat box on your screen. If you think of a question for the speakers at any point, just type it in there and we will pose it to our speakers at the end of the webinar. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to answer all the questions either today or we'll, we'll follow up with you individually. So I'd just like to make some introductions. So today webinar, today's webinar is being presented by BoxEver, a personalization platform that uses data and AI to make every customer interaction smarter. Uh, we work with great brands such as Emirates and AIB to deliver game-changing customer experiences. I'm Dave and I'm the CEO and co-founder of BoxEver. Uh, you know, there's a huge amount of hype around AI, omni-channel and one-to-one. And -one. But, you know, we think a, a word is, is conspicuously, conspicuously missing, uh, decisioning. We, we don't think it should be because without decisioning and it's uh, close cousin real-time interaction management, these kind of smart interactions are impossible. So we decided to do this webinar to introduce these concepts and why decisioning is such a game changer for brands looking to win in this age of experiences and, and, and obviously how you can master it. So I'm joined on the panel today by Rusty Warner, uh, Principal Analyst at Forrester, and Seamus Murphy, the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at AIB, Ireland's biggest bank and recognized uh, leader in digital banking. So with all of that covered, I'm gonna hand over to you, Rusty. That's great, thank you very much, Dave. And thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. We appreciate your attendance and we're going to endeavor to share with you uh, some concepts about decisioning and how that can support the way you deliver better customer experiences. And to kick off, we're going to actually start with the customer. And regardless of what we all do in our daily lives as employees, we are, of course, customers at the end of the day. And we know that some of these things that I'm going to talk about here are true. We know that the way we interact with brands has changed. And we find ourselves interacting with some Uber brands that are global in nature. We interact with Apple and Facebook and Google and Amazon and other massive organizations. And every time we do that, and every time they implement something innovative that gives us a better experience, we bring that expectation with us to our local brands that we also do business with. And at the same time that those brands have to deal with that kind of expectation, they also need to deal with the fact that we're using new devices and touch points that are right for us as customers. And of course, we're generating more and more interaction data as we use those devices. And you would think that that means that it should be easier for a brand to leverage that data and understand us better as consumers so that the brand can provide a better experience. Actually, we find that a lot of brands are getting that wrong and they're not able to use that data effectively. And instead, they put the cognitive load on the customer. You notice here we're depicting a customer with that massive brain on his back where the customer has to decide how and when to interact with the brand and how to solve problems and where to go to get the information that he or she is looking for. And we don't think that's good enough moving forward. Uh, we think that brands have to win in those moments that matter to the customers. And as I said, we're all consumers at the end of the day, and we know that we expect to get what we want when we want it, not when it's convenient for that brand. We do find, as I mentioned earlier, that brands sometimes get it wrong and they're not using the information that we provide to communicate with us effectively. And in fact, our research has shown that if you talk to a brand about its intentions, that nearly everyone 
will say, absolutely, we're personalizing experiences, or we're trying to connect the dots between a digital experience and an offline experience, like in the store or in a bank branch. But when we talk to consumers, we get a very different picture. We find that very few consumers believe that email is well-timed with their needs versus the schedule of the brand. And we find that a very small number, especially among young people, feel that brands are doing enough to make them feel valued and important to that brand. Part of why we think that's difficult for the brands to get right is too often they haven't connected all of their internal dots in order to deliver that effective customer experience. And we think that it takes a business strategy connected with the organization and then investments in the right technology that will let you do this in a way that matters for the customer. Usually when we see brands begin this journey, they, they start by trying to become more efficient in the way they operate. But then they will look to make smarter decisions to Dave's point earlier about how decisioning becomes a very critical part of this process. And then you don't just want to make those smart decisions, you want to make them faster. You want to gain speed and momentum so that you become more agile in the way you make those decisions. And of course, you want to do that in a way that helps you continuously improve not only the business, but the way you optimize customer journeys. Now, even though it takes strategy and organizational elements, we're going to focus now on some of the technology capabilities that we think are important. And the right technology has got to enable you to deliver contextually relevant experiences or value or utility. Notice that we don't say deliver the right content or deliver the right campaign. We think you have to go beyond that and make really good decisions that will matter for the customer. You also have to decide with that customer when is the appropriate moment in the customer life cycle, and you're going to have to deliver to those touch points that matter to the customer in his or her moment of need. And that's going to require decisioning capabilities that are multifaceted. We think that it starts with identity resolution. You need to recognize and make a decision very quickly as to how you're going to treat a customer. You need to know if this person who is anonymous at the moment is indeed a customer who hasn't authenticated, or if the customer is indeed someone who's new to the brand. Have they interacted before? And have you begun to build an anonymous profile that will help you keep track of the interaction with that customer's permission, of course, so that you can treat them in the way that they expect to be treated. To do that, you're going to make some decisions about the history that you keep and the way you merge that history with the real-time context so that you can make a better decision about what is the appropriate action or offer that needs to happen at that moment in time. You then need to decide what is the appropriate channel, or in some cases, multiple channels that you're going to use to ensure that that overall experience meets the customer's expectations. And then finally, you're going to capture that data from that interaction so that you can make good decisions about how to optimize the experience of that customer in the moment, as well as across the life cycle that that customer has with the brand. Collectively, then, you can use that information to make good decisions about how you optimize your business strategy to better serve all of your customers. This technology that we're talking about will also embrace context and help you as a brand put yourself into the customer's shoes so that you can create that value exchange that is important to the customer. We think you'll need to focus on what is useful before being merely clever. So you're going to need to find what is meaningful to the customer and then build that utility into all of the programs that you execute. 
If you get that right, you can begin to eliminate the friction in the way the customers interact with the brand. You can begin to anticipate the customer needs, and you can create that more immersive experience that the customers are looking for. You also have to remember that customers don't see your internal organization or the different channels that you've created. To them, it's an experience with the brand regardless of the touch point. So here I've depicted a banking scenario, but this could be any vertical, where whether you're interacting directly with a consumer or you're directing with people on a commercial basis in a business-to-business -business mode, you have to take into consideration the online elements and the mobile elements, as well as what happens when the customer calls the contact center or when that person walks into a branch. You might need to think about uh, situations that involve even more human assistance, like in wealth management or financial services where there's an agent or an advisor who is in the mix to interact with that customer and deliver the experience that is expected. Notice that there are requirements here that go well beyond marketing technology. That's why we think decisioning is so critical. You're going to connect with back office data and back office systems, as well as those front office systems that are touching the customers. And that's going to require data and analytics that will enable you to make a good decision, a good decision rather, regardless of the touch point. And when you start to think about it this way, you will begin to realize that getting that customer experience right is more than just a superficial level of personalization. Knowing what my name is so that you can say, Dear Rusty, in an email is not going to be good enough. You also can't promote your products to me because I'm part of a segment and you think you know which products appeal to that segment. It has to be more individual than that. You can't just see what I've looked at on your website and then retarget me either with email if I'm a, an existing customer or with an ad if uh, I'm an anonymous customer and you want to acquire me via social media or via search and display. And it's worse if you think, oh, I know who that person is because I have a mobile ID or I have a cookie. So I can put the same ad on all of that, those different devices the person is using without thinking about my needs as a customer. You also won't win if you embark on a strategy that uses wisdom of the crowd because you know what's trending today or what other customers have bought. So you're going to offer that to me. And you're certainly not going to win points if you start stalking me because you think I'm a great prospect for the brand. And I sum that up with the picture, which probably has caught everyone's eye because it has WTF in big letters here. And I actually borrowed this from a big bank in Europe. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see there's a door handle beside that young man's chin. And this bank has put posters, these bigger than life posters on all the doors at its world headquarters, just to remind uh, everyone who works in the organization that there's a customer at the other end of that interaction. And you never want the customer to look at you and give you that WTF face. So if I've told you what the right technology does not do, let's look at what it does do for you. And first of all, you're going to want to combine your systems of insight and your systems of engagement. And I know those sound like the usual terms that a Forrester analyst might use, but what we really mean by that is connecting your data to your analytics and insights so systems so that you can then create the right content and deliver that content to your marketing automation systems so that you can orchestrate those meaningful interactions. So we actually see the systems of insight and systems of engagement being so tightly integrated that you really can't distinguish between the two because you're leveraging both 
in equal measure so that you can deliver the right experience across that customer life cycle. And more than just connecting the insights and the engagement, you're eliminating the gap that occurs between understanding the customer and being able to do something meaningful with that insight so that it matters to the customer. We've interviewed a lot of organizations that tell us, of course, they want to be more data and insights driven, but a relatively small number are good at turning data into action. And you should look at technology investments that don't simply connect your insights to your engagement, but help you eliminate this gap and help you become faster. Back to that uh, graphic I showed you at the beginning where you're looking at your strategy, your organization, and your technology. You might begin with efficiency in the decision making, but then you're going to want to turn that up and do it quicker so that you can become more agile. And the right technology will enable you to make those decisions quicker and start to eliminate this data to action gap. Not only will it help with that time delay that a lot of brands experience, it'll help you start to look at your data differently so that you can make good decisions about the data sources that you're going to use. It will help you find the value in those data sources so that you can ask the right questions. You can begin to understand which data is relevant to your business. Can it really be useful in helping you predict behavior so that you can anticipate those customer needs? And ultimately, is it actionable in a way that supports what the customer is looking for, but also helps me execute my business strategy? Another benefit of the technology is helping you get a handle on artificial intelligence. And I know there's a lot of hype out there about AI right now, and it's all singing, all dancing, and it can help you do anything and everything. And we think you need to take a step back and take a pragmatic look at it in terms of how you're going to leverage data to better serve the customers and deliver those better experiences. Because artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is ultimately about the data more so than the clever algorithms that you're going to apply to that data. And you need to think about how to get the right blend of humans and technology so that you can ingest the right data, you can deploy your models so that they can sense and learn, you can expose these actions that might be automated in the technology or delivered to someone in the organization so that they can do the right thing for the customer, and then embed that learning back in the organization. And AI isn't going to do that on its own. You really need to apply your strategy and organizational elements here so that everything that you learn by using the technology finds its way back into the business and helps you deliver a, a better experience for the customer. And you're going to want to do that not once, but every time the customer interacts with you regardless of the touch point and regardless of where that customer is in his or her journey with the brand. It starts with discover when the customer is just learning about the brand and then exploring uh, the options that face that person as a consumer. And I know when I talk to organizations that lots of them face pushback within the company because people believe that these functions within the life cycle should be split up among the different parts of the organization. And discover and explore would belong to marketing. Buy would belong to sales. The use and ask would belong to customer services. And then everyone gets involved and jumps on the customer when it comes time for a renewal and you want to engage. And we think that that is a mistake and that doesn't put your best foot forward with the customer. We think there's a role to play for all of those different business functions across the customer life cycle. And your technology should help you get the balance right so that no matter what the phase of the customer life cycle, you're doing the right thing in terms of the customer expectations. When you roll all of that up, 
this technology investment that you're going to make should support your digital transformation. And it should do that in a way that helps you become a more customer-led organization. We believe that every brand is aware of its customers, but we don't think that's good enough. We think you have to become customer obsessed and let all of those insights that you are deriving from your data begin to drive the business in a way that makes the customers feel like they are in lead of the brand instead of the brand trying to push offers at them. We think that the technology will make you faster at doing that. And it might not be perfect. You, know, If you're waiting for the perfect customer profile or the perfect customer data uh, solution or the perfect application, you're going to be waiting a very long time. We think that you need to make some good decisions about the technology you're going to use and become a more agile organization. You might make mistakes. They definitely should be calculated risks that you've taken. You can't be too risky, especially if you're in banking, for example. But we think you need to leverage your technology to be quicker. And in that speed, you need to also connect the different parts of the organization and begin to eliminate your organizational silos so that you show one face to the customer and deliver the you know, against the expectations the customer has. And with that, I'm, I'm actually going to hand over to Seamus because he's going to take us through the uh, strategy at AIB and share with us how they've put some of what I've talked about into practice. So Seamus, it's over to you. Thanks, Rusty. Uh, so welcome, everyone, uh, those in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, my name is Seamus Murphy. I'm the Chief Data and Analytics Officer in Allied Irish Bank. Just a bit of background about myself. I've been in financial services for 20 plus years. Majority of my time has been spent in the Irish market and some of my time spent in the Australian market. I've uh, held various sort of technology and leadership roles. Uh, my leadership roles primarily were with the business in finance and technology. And I've always had an emphasis on, I suppose, customer first, digital and uh, data. I suppose to get to know me a bit better, uh, some of my passions, obviously, uh, my number one priority is my family. I'm married to Orla, three young kids. I'm an avid sports fan. Uh, to my detriment, I support uh, County Down football. And my third, more on a professional front, as I spoke about before, I'm really sort of customer uh, focused, customer obsessed, uh, digital and data. And I suppose fundamentally sort of building strong teams and partnering uh, and partnerships aligned to our common purpose and our common goal. And I believe we have a very strong partnership with Box Ever aligned to AAB's purpose and ambition. So this, the slide in front of you, this sort of articulates AAB's purpose and our ambition. But a bit of background about AAB. AAB stands for Allied Irish Bank. Uh, we are a leading Irish bank we have over 2 million customers, over 40% market share, 10,000 employees. We have very strong financial metrics around our capital balance sheet, PL, and cost income, and a very uh, credible customer NPS scores. We have anchored around three lines of business. We have our consumer, which is primarily our personal and micro SME customers, and real time sort of personalization really plays into that segment. We've got our homes, and I suppose the homes, their role is to reimagine how we back people to have a place they call home. And we have our business customers, and they're very much our one million plus customers that are relationship managed. But if I step back and the focus of this slide is on the ambition statement on the left, uh, we will be at the heart of our customers' financial lives by always being useful, always informing, and always providing an exceptional customer experience. And if you infer the word always, always I infer to be 24 7, seven days a week. And if you think of sort of the heightened customer expectations, you know, always being useful to the customer, especially when we refer to the attention economy. You know, we have to ensure we always give that consistent uh, experience to the customer and always being relevant. And if we take a step back in banking into the sort of 70s and 80s model, where the branch manager and the branch staff knew their customers when they come in through the door. They were able to make decisions there and then with their customers 
about their customers because they understood their needs and their wants. And if we fast forward into today's banking model and we go omni-channel on how customers can interact, we need, uh, we need to be able, no matter what channel they come in on, to have real-time decisions. And that's the fundamentals, what I believe, of real-time personalization, making the right decision for that customer, a fair and better decision and a better outcome for the customer, no matter what channel they come in on. So consistency is important. It's also important to meet our ambition, always providing exceptional customer experience and always being relevant to have those decisions in real time that always are better and fair to the, to the customer. So we're on a journey, and we're on a journey of Box Ever on the real-time personalization. I suppose it'd be, it'd be, it's important to me to take a step back on how, what part of the journey we're on and understand AAB's sort of strategic approach over the last three to five years. And AAB consciously and planfully did go customer first. We made a significant investment in a customer first strategy and a digital transformation. We made a billion plus investment and very much anchored around the whole customer experience and shifting from that product mindset to the experiential mindset around our customer. We also balanced that with our operational excellence. And what I mean by that is very simply how we actually can simplify the offer to our customer. How can, how can we give different offerings across our digital channels and migrate our customers to the digital channels and ultimately reduce cost in our back office. We looked at our sort of key customer journeys. We defined them and re-engineered them. We looked at journeys like change of address, sort of three clicks and out. We looked at mobile first. We looked at paperless in the branches. We looked at personal lending journeys and, and, and sales journeys. And fundamentally, we digitized those journeys and sort of optimized the footprint and the value chain. And we simplified the journeys and try to deliver sort of frictionless experience. And that brought in the likes of new technologies around biometrics, robotics, and AI. An outcome of all that was a strong foundation evidenced by we're now 95% of our transactions are digital. We have a cost income now down in the sort of in the 50% from the high 70s. We have the highest adoption of mobile in Europe. Our digital sales journeys, our MPS scores are 70 plus, and our relationship MPS is in the high 30s, which were at the time in the, in the minus 30s or 40s, come back three to five years ago. So why did I tell you that? Our journey is always an evolution. And now the next biggest part of evolution is to ensure we're always relevant to our customer. On the first part of this slide, we talk about simple and simplifying our architecture. A big part of the last three to five years, when we looked at the customer first and digital transformation, was simplifying our architecture. And it was focusing on, on services, not, challenge, not channels. And what we, for, we framed it as sort of API first. It's most simplest. We looked at a three-tier architecture. We looked at the sort of systems of engagement. We looked at systems of integration and system of record. And between the system of engagement and the system of integration, we decoupled by API and API first. And with the system of integration and the system of record, we decoupled by microservices. So the statement there, focus is services, not channels, is actually what we do now, we focus on the service. So again, think of banking over the years, we focus on the channel, physical channel on the branch, telephony on the contact center, online, it was all channel with monolithic applications and architecture. We've now fundamentally decoupled that and we give ourselves the opportunity now to actually to look to our next phase, which I believe is the one that actually brings on the heartbeat of the brain to ensure we remain relevant to our customer is a real-time personalization or real-time decisioning to ensure we give a fair and useful outcome to our customer uh, on a real-time basis. So what I mean by relevant again, sorry, what I mean by relevant, again, we have simplified our architecture. We've delivered a, a customer first franchise. However, we need to move from the traditional sort of informational uh, provisioning to more real time understanding uh, of, our, of our customer. Fundamentally for sustainable business, we need to be relevant and consistent and meeting customer expectations as they evolve. But we also we have to defend our market position. Uh, we'll have our own competitors in the Irish market, we'll have new entrants. Uh, so it's important to us to defend that position. And to quote something from Rusty's slides, which really hit home, I went through Rusty's slides, was deliver contextually relevant experiences and value at the appropriate, mo at the appropriate moment. Simply put, deliver real-time customer personalization, be relevant. 
So we need to distill that down, hence why we, we are now partnering with Box Ever. So why Box Ever? So with three things up here, people, platform, and approach. Number one for me, above all, we had to have Box Ever have a superb platform, AI and data platform, but it's the people. When I first engaged with Dave, when I first engaged with the team, they understood our business. They understood our ambition. They simply, I would say, they got it. You know, they are really aligned to our values and also to our architect architectural principles, the whole API first, the whole cloud uh, migration. I said before, the, the platform, the AI and data platform is leading in the market, but it's also accompanied by the, the top class team, a team that I trust, a team that's pragmatic in their approach to solutioning, a team that take accountability and a team are outcome focused. And I mean by outcome focused, very much around customer value. From a platform perspective, again, I spoke about it, their principles are very much API first. They're very much around the open standards, DMN, the decision model notation. That's a standard that allows us to remove the whole black box from how decisions work. It's critical from a banking and regulation perspective, but it's critical from a conduct perspective to understand you know, we always have the, the uh, a fair outcome to our customer, the traceability of our decisions, you know, the privacy by design. And that's the next point, security and privacy. Again, they're very open and pragmatic about their, their approach to security and privacy. We went from a hybrid model, from a cloud and on-prem, and they were flexible uh, and uh, went way above and above, beyond to address our concerns. And then scale. We may not have scale as the airline industry, but by, we were talking about millions of events per day. We're talking about eight to 10 billion per year. So we're able to ingest that and ensure that at any given time, in real time, we're actually always being useful and always being relevant to the, to the customer. The approach, explainable AI, explainable AI, again, not unlike the open standards, it's important that from an audibility and traceability, we can explain how the decisions are being made. We can explain the AI. Again, uh, collaboration. Again, that goes back up to the people piece. You know, again, they were aligned to a common uh, to a common goal. They were aligned to our common purpose. There's a great work environment. There's great collaboration between the teams, and there's a high level of trust and accountability, and the future vision. So again, they're fully bought into our vision from an AB perspective, and we're bought into their vision how they're going to research and develop their product to meet our needs and meet the needs across other customers. On the final slide. I suppose there's our journey to date and into the future. There's a few things, but three key things I would call out are considerations for people who are going to go on this journey, whether banking or other industries. The first one I would say is always focus on customer outcomes. Pick a journey rather than a channel. This isn't about a channel, this is channel agnostic. This is about the customer. That the customer outcomes you want inform the personalization decisions that will support those outcomes, and that in turn informs your data requirements. As Rusty said, fundamentally, this is about data, this is about eventing, this is about understanding your customer across all your channels and ensuring you're actually putting the right, uh, right information back into the customer's hands. Be clear on what success means in terms of improving the customer experience and test comp uh, competing approaches. So people may have heard of A-B testing. So by all means, it's very, very important that you actually test your, test your models Improving completion rates is more important than improving click-through. So you may have the greatest click-through in the world, but if you're not converting or completing, you know, from a service perspective or sales perspective, you're not moving your agenda on from a business perspective. And lastly, from a consideration, it's about building an agile, multidisciplined team. In order to get one-to-one -one personalization, you need, a, you need agility to continuously roll out new experience and iterate. New ideas for customer outcomes could mean new data acquisition, app or website development, and or new creative content. This means you need to have strong engagement with, with engineering, marketing, and propositions, all working with privacy and compliance teams, and working with our partners to ensure everything you do is balanced and fair to the customer. And finally, when I look to the future, I think the future for us in terms of personalization is when our experiences are designed from the start with personalization in mind, rather than personalization being an afterthought. Companies like Netflix built up and website experiences that are structured around personalization 
in their app and website experiences that are unique to each customer. We need to think about we need to sorry, we need to think about what what would what would look good in the banking context, but not just limit to apps and websites, but had potentially in physical branches, contact centers, and all the ways into the future in which we meet our customer banking needs. Thank you. Thanks, Seamus, and, and, and thanks, Rusty. Uh, I think there's some kind of great content there. You know, we heard Rusty talk about consistency, consistency and smart decision making, and speed of decision making. Uh, and Seamus, you know, introducing to, to the AIB strategy around simplification, you know, which I think is really, really important in a digital world. And having an API first strategy allows them to scale and, and move much quicker. I think the concept of, of services, not channel, channels, or experiences, not products, I think these are core to becoming customer centric. Um, so we've got a bunch of questions. Um, so what I do is I'll, I'll pick a couple and uh, put them to our panelists. So the first one is to Rusty. Rusty, what are some of the common pitfalls to avoid when embarking on a digital transformation or customer experience journey? Yeah, well, I think what I've seen happen in a lot of organizations is jumping on a technology bandwagon without first taking into consideration the strategy and the impact on the organization. And if you're looking for the technology investment itself to deliver value and to do the job, then uh, then that's the wrong approach. I think you need to take a step back and look at the business and what the business requires and let the needs that you have to serve the customer guide that technology investment. And I think we heard Seamus talk about that with uh, what he does with Box Ever and what the organization was looking for when making the decision. And, and that's what I would encourage organizations uh, to do. Uh, there's a lot of hype out in the market. There's a lot of technology uh, capabilities that overlap and the messages may all sound the same. So taking that time to understand what you really need from a strategy and organizational perspective will, will be a good uh, guide as you think about the investments. Well, that's a great point, Rusty. I think one of the things that struck me with AIB is that they did take their time. You know, it wasn't a, a technology-led investment. It was really about them understanding what needed to be done and then finding the right technology to support that. Actually, here's an AIB question, one for you, Seamus. What areas are, or where do you think personalization can have the most impact for AIB and, and, and in banking in general? To be honest, Dave, I think personalization will be differentiation for banking and in particular in the AIB. Uh, you know, we talk about the heightened customer expectations. We talk about being responsive to the customer, you know, and delivering their needs and wants. And I think as across most sectors, most industries, you have to need one of the customer at the heart, you know. And I always we we talk about it being a sustainable business and being relevant. To be relevant, you have to be responsive to the customer's needs. Yeah. So I think fundamentally, it's the heart of our strategy going forward. Could be more. Um, but one for you, Rusty. Uh, how do you get started, and what are the first critical steps? Well, it it might sound fairly obvious, but I think it comes down to having a really solid customer data management strategy. You need to understand the data that's going to be important for delivering a better customer experience. And Seamus alluded to this as well. You can't do that on a departmental basis. You're going to need a cross-functional approach that crosses the business uh, and, and different aspects of the business from, from marketing to product to uh, the, the folks in risk and legal and, of course, the CIO's organization so that you can define a strategy that everyone follows. And I would also underscore that you need to treat it as a strategy. Customer data management doesn't come down to a technology platform. Your philosophy in terms of how you're going to capture and use that data, how you're going to apply the insights, how you're going to determine what's important for the business, that is strategic in nature. It's not simply choosing the right technology platform. Uh, well, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, this one's for you, Seamus. Uh, what other investments, I think you've alluded to some of this already, but what other investments outside of technology 
is required to ensure that your strategy is a success? I wouldn't say it's much an investment, I think. Uh, Rusty mentioned this as well. It's hearts and minds. It's uh, getting, aligned, getting people aligned to a common, common goal. Uh, you know, to bring in personalization into AIB, you have a wide range of stakeholders from business, technology, data analytics, right through to compliance, and obviously with our partners with the box server, and how we can get everybody bought in uh, to the overall vision around personalization. Uh, so that's the biggest thing for me. It's hearts and minds. It's how you use collaboration and how you actually, what do you call, bring an organization with you by bringing the, the key stakeholders and understanding the value that personaliz personalization and real time decision and gives AIP. Yeah, so I, you know, I couldn't agree more. I think you know, to, to really solve this, there's obviously a top down piece from a from a strategy senior leadership perspective, but there's a people process and technology piece that needs to work in lockstep to really deliver this across the business. Um, so thank you everybody for for joining today's webinar. And Rusty and Seamus, thank you for your insight and expertise. Um, if you have any additional questions or would like to connect directly to the speakers or box ever you can reach out via twitter linkedin or email um, if you uh, are interested more in in decisioning uh, i would suggest you download our decisioning guide at boxever.com decisioning guide that's there on the screen but other than that uh thank you all thank you all for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day thank you bye-bye